Welcome to Rumbi and Sensat Late Night Show. I'm so excited that you guys are coming through so that we can have a chart. It's time to prepare. Let me just tell you why people are being uh, are receiving cars, free cars. Now you've seen the negotiations on the table with some of the triple C cabal. You ask yourself, what is the agenda? Of course, <laughs> more time, more time in the space, more time in time for manipulation is gone. And I want to welcome you guys so that we can really have a conversation. Please don't forget to like the live so that and we can push algorithm and inviting other people to join in the conversation. Good to see everybody. I'm so desperate to see who is actually the first person line tonight. Um, yes, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've seen the headlines. So Chamisa's preparation for a new Zimbabwe that is coming. So he's on his, you know, that stage of preparation. We also have to look at weakness by corrupt activities. Quite very sad. That's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Hi, Nessa is here. Brafeo is here. Good to see y'all. What's up, Gibson? Gilson, sorry. Good to see you. Happy weekend, everybody. I hope you guys are well. Just tell me what you guys are drinking. Of course, I'm drinking water. Like, I'm a water baby. So, I'm drinking water. And I also have um, lemon coffee. So, good to see everybody. <laughs> My <will> you please? <laughs> You see, the thing is, each and every person come here with a different song. Hilda, good to see you, man. What's happening? Chuenga is planning something. Uh, yeah, what do you expect? You heard what uh, Eddie Cross said when he spoke about uh, that Mr. Chuenga who never rules in public, even for five minutes. <laughs> but don't forget, he literally played a huge role in, 20, in 2017. So pretty much, um, you know, Eddie Cross saying that statement, I think for me, that it was extremely disrespectful like again i'm going to ask you guys all of you to go in and like the live let's push algorithm and invite everyone let me tell you there's something that has been going on on x so you guys if you're not on x please run there and follow me on rumbi and censored facebook rumbi and censored they did hack my facebook page so for that reason i pushed up a bit so that i could strategize and come back also tiktok rumbi and censored again we still talk about politics and religious seeing what's happening in the area so there has been a cookout challenge on x and what's interesting is this weekend it's actually for ambassadors in zimbabwe so they're cooking so you call it high theories that is meat beef and vegetables let me tell you we grew up eating that a lot my mom was very good on that oh yeah mm -hmm. and let me tell you i'm also very good on that <laughs> let me tell you because you know i took my mom's blessings when she went to heaven she was like no i'm not gonna go with my talents i'm gonna drop them you know by you and i said thank you bye i'll see you later on so yeah i'm still around so really very 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 incredible challenge um that is going down on x and i encourage you guys to spread love Nothing, nothing would move us forward except unity. If you know that the other people have been working tirelessly to divide us, and the only way we can counter such a heinous and evil, evil activity is for us to come together and unite. So I love these kind of challenges. As long as they bring us together, we're good. And then uh, I saw a movement where they are saying, we, the citizens of Zimbabwe, are united. We must send that is a hashtag. We, the citizens of Zimbabwe, are united. And uh, they said, please help spread the word. Share this poster as widely as you can. A better, a new, better, inclusive Zimbabwe for all is what we are pursuing. Um, a new, better, inclusive Zimbabwe for all. Quite, quite very, very incredible uh, initiative right here. So, guys, I'm asking you to unite. That's all we're going to be doing. This. So, because other people are coming through, so, you know, I'm, I'm just doing what I have to do. Because, you know, as long as I'm, cause I'm still celebrating Thomas Mafumo, really, and uh, encourage people to say unity, unity, unity. And I preach that. I can never stress on that one enough. So, yeah, so that we can move forward. <laughs> Yeah. 
guys. Um, uh, good to see everybody, and thank you so much for coming through tonight. I'm so excited that you guys are here. So the other people are saying, let me tell you, sometimes I don't know how to deal with people. One minute, oh, the volume is low. One minute, oh, it's too much. Yo, you know, if it's too much, reduce your volume. If it's, it's low, you can increase, right? So that we can all move forward. It's very difficult because each and every gadget is different. Some people are watching from television. Some people are watching from their phone. And the phones are also different. So please, I'm asking you to be also patient and be accommodative um, so that we can move forward, right? So really, the goal here is to bring all people together. Enough with a, with a, with a division. It's not helping us. It's keeping us at ransom. It's keeping us in poverty. And we need to do away with uh, hatred. And we need. We can't move forward. Now, what we are looking at tonight, we are looking at Nelson Chamisa and what is preparing for the new Zimbabwe that is coming. Whether people like it or not, this new Zimbabwe is on the way. <laughs> it's on the way. It's not like, like, like play, like play, but we are moving forward, right? Yeah, each day, one step at a time. We are getting there, little by little. Some people may think that there's nothing going on. No, a lot is going on in the background. A lot is going on. <laughs> you may not be, you know, um, you know, informed, but a lot is really going on right now. But I wanted to talk about, um, I, I, for me, I feel like it's a myth. It's definitely a myth around our people. Where the assumption that no Sun Chami says, number one, is not strong. Number one, is doing nothing. No, no, no. It's a game of chess. For those that didn't watch the video that we did yesterday, it's simply a game of chess. Right, we've been played for literally decades, played by people, dirty. You know what I mean? It's time for us to play the chess. It's a game until we cross over. So yeah, let's listen to um, Eddie Cross. Okay, Eddie Cross, you heard what he said about um, Nelson Chamisa. You also heard, I wanted to also to listen to what Douglas Monzora said. As much as people think that Nelson Chamisa is not that strong, but they have so much expectations. You know why? This is a too much. To those we have been receiving much, much is also expected, right? So people don't realize that what destiny does is when somebody is called for a certain purpose, is people begin to demand things because of the grace that the person carry. And some of them think, they may think that no, they just don't like him as a person. No, it's not about him. <laughs> it's about you are connecting him. Your spirit is connected to him. Remember, we are spiritual beings. We are not this body. We are, this is simply a house. But because we are spiritual beings, sometimes it's hard for us to actually see how the world works and what's really going on in the spiritual realm. So I want us to listen to Douglas Monzora. Again, to say, oh, Chamis has a problem. You should have pursued President Emerson Nangago when elections were duped. <laughs> you know? Um, and then we're also going to be looking at, um, uh, listening to a decrease as well. Still have expectations. Chamisa could have done more. And we all know. What we, we saw, everyone saw what happened uh, last year. So I think it's unfair for people to know going around and say Chamisa should be doing something. What were you expecting him to do? What were you expecting him to do? To go around and be tossed left, right, and send them, wasting his time? No. <laughs> Sometimes it takes wisdom to know how to play the game. When you see that you're just, people just, they want your attention. They simply want your time. They want your attention. You pull back your energy and you act like you're foolish, but you know exactly what you're doing it's called playing the game of chess life on its own is a war it's a game someone moves another person moves two kingdoms fighting for your life the kingdom of satan and the kingdom of god it's not you know when the devil's moving god is moving the devil moves you move you know god moves so this is what's going on in the country it's definitely a game of chess but we'll get there because we are holding the checkmate no matter how long it's going to take but we are getting the Zimbabwe. The freedom we want is definitely around the corner. Let's listen to Mr. Douglas Monzora. I thinking that Chamisa would have done more, irregardless of the fact that he was also part of the game. He thinks that Chamisa could have done more. Take a listen. Before the finalization of the Kasukuere case. And I pulled out before the finalization of the Kasukuere case. The law is very, very clear that you cannot pull, you, you cannot print ballot papers when a presidential candidate is still at court. Kasukuere was still at court when I pulled out. <laughs> and I was told that we cannot uh, uh, remove you now because you are already on the ballot paper. So what my pulling out actually showed is that I, the ballot papers had been printed before, well before, which meant that 
they knew what the outcome of the Kasukuere case would be. And, 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 and of course, uh, the printing had already been done. But I told the Zimbabweans that I am not uh, a candidate anymore. So you can so, say, so you, why, see, why? You, see, you see how it is important for me to keep probing you. You have given us information that we otherwise never had. Do you agree? What? You have given us information that we <laughs> oh, otherwise... Oh, you, you, you did not have that information. Yes, and oh, we have probed uh, you until you have released it. <laughs> that is the importance. Okay. Yes. But Probe but, again. Yes, but let's let's go let's go to 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 the to the to the other other issue, uh, Senator. You said that the people who could have challenged this election in the Constitutional Court and they didn't. You were on the ballot, albeit forced. You could have challenged. Why didn't you not? Because it would have been an oxymoron, pleasant. I pulled out of the election. I announced it. I even said I was not interested in that election. I didn't participate in it. Uh, and therefore, I could not challenge it. Why? Because for you to challenge the election, you must have the material to use. You must have information, uh, V11 forms, V23 forms. You must have knowledge about um, the county from your polling agents. I no longer had that. I couldn't challenge. The person who could challenge this election was Advocate Chamisa. And he said that he was going to challenge. He changed his mind, and therefore the election was then led to stand. So in your mind, right now, you're clear that Advocate Nelson Chamisa is aiding Zanupia? I said, by his actions, he aided Zanupia. And those actions helped Zanupia. And you also said he donated three, two thirds. Well, you, you didn't mention the name, I just want to clarify who aided Zanupiev by donating to this majority to it? I think he did. I think he did bless it. Um, he did it in a very passive manner. Uh, when the recalls were happening, uh, he would have, he, he, he did not support the MPs. He did not even depose an affidavit that Chabamu was not a member of the Triple C and that Chabamu did not have authority. I would have done that. And therefore, I believe that there was method in the madness. I genuinely believe that. So, in your view, Nelson Chamisa is a victim of his own making? I did never say that he was a victim. I never said that. But uh, if you look at, uh, uh, at not protecting your MPs, not deposing an affidavit, that would have uh, resolved this matter. In, in, because they were fighting on who had authority. And the most undisputed leader in the opposition was their president uh, in, in, in the Triple C. It was their president. Nobody would have questioned um, uh, what Advocate Chamisa was within the Triple C. His affidavit would have been unfathomably important, blessed. And the absence of this his affidavit was commended upon by Justice um, Mutevens. Um, and uh, on the second case, despite the comment by Justice Mutevens, the Triple C did not correct itself. Right? And the MPs were let to go um, as they were, and uh, they lost uh, the, the, their court case, they, two court cases. Uh, they lost the right to represent their party and so on. And as we can see, ZANU-PF has two the majority. I want to thank you very the much. Commissions and commissions speak it for themselves. I want to thank you very much for this. All right. So, like I said to you, I think everyone is just blaming us on chance. So, do you think, do you think Zimbabweans, honestly, where we are today, we should outsource our struggle in terms of blaming one person? You know, we are where we are today is because of Nelson Chamisa. So for the past four decades that we have been under this brutality, it was because of Nelson Chamisa. You see, what well, the danger is, we kind of suffering from, um, you know, the quality um, Stockholm syndrome. You know, you end up worshipping your oppressor or your abuser. Do you really think that we should blame Nelson Chamisa for where we are today? But Monzora thinks we should because Nelson Chamisa didn't fight um, Zanpiev.
That's actually nonsense to me. It's simply a waste of my time to actually listen to Monzora. But it was important for you to understand that when a person is given um, um, an assignment, it's very easy or it's actually very possible for people to blame that person. You know why? Because destiny is calling. Destiny is calling. This is why people keep on blaming us. You, know, you should come up with a solution. But honestly, if there was a free and fair, credible election in the country, it should be the president today. It's a fact. <laughs> it's not. But no, there wasn't a free election. It was seen. Everybody knows there, was not a, there wasn't a free election in the country. Uh, even if people can try to sweep it under the rug, maybe, maybe, maybe we are victims of just not being able to speak truth into power. Majority of people just say, no, we don't want to get involved. Let me tell you, you may not want to get involved, but you're already involved. The fact that you're actually afraid to stand for what you believe in, it shows that you are involved. You're being controlled, whether you like it or not. And they've realized that we always fold. That's why they keep playing games because Zimbabweans fold all the time. They will leave the country <laughs> and be stuck in, in somewhere else and be sleeping in the bus and leave their, their houses because they always fold. And they know you're always going to fold. But I think it's time for us, if they play us to divide ourselves, it's time for us to come together and really, really stand, stand against this nonsense um, for what we believe in. Eddie Cross as well thinks that Chamisa could have done more you know, in the issue of Shavangu, but we know there was nothing that he could have done because, because our people, our people have chosen, have chosen hatred more than love. Because for me, honestly acting, um, whether you're looking at the army, you look at the, uh, our, the police, uh, the judges, I mean, across the spectrum, if we can choose hatred more than we can choose love, is we will turn a blind eye when wrong is there and pretend like we haven't seen it. We all saw what Shavangu did and where we came from. A guy that was never known. People saw Chamis on a campaign trail. He was moving from pillar to post. We saw them. But we will pretend like we didn't see and we can actually entertain just a normal a person from nowhere. And then you turn around and say, Chamisa is a problem. No, Chamisa is not the problem. We are the problem. That's all I can say. We Zimbabweans, we are the problem. Every Zimbabwean is the problem. And including me, I'm the problem. Because if we come together, hear this out and hear me well. If we come together and know what we, what we deserve, and said, this is actually not who we are. Now, that's why I agree with what Fazia Mayer said. The problem is we don't know how to say this is not who we are. But we say, oh, no, it's happening to the neighbor. I don't really care. It's not me. We, Zimbabweans, across the board, I don't care what job you have. I don't care how you look. I don't care how much money is in your bank account. I don't care where, which holiday you are taking next month. I do not care how many kids you have. I don't care how many insurance you have. I don't care if you're a manager of whichever company, how many companies you're owning. Everybody, we should strive, Masiwa. We have a problem, Zimbabweans. We have allowed wrong for decades. And we think Chamisa can be blamed for our, us allowing wrong to carry on without having a solution. I mean, that week or that month when wrong started, people could have said, uh, 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 uh. This can't be. It was a month, no, two months, six months, a year, a year, 10 to five years, five years, 10 to 10, 10 years, 10 to oh, 20, 20 years, 30, 30 years, 40. We're still blaming each other, honestly. Honestly, we're still blaming also each other. So we always find whom we can blame every time we're in this, we're in a problem, someone has to be blamed. Why the Shavangu can't be blamed? I'll tell you why. Because even people can see him, they can't even question him. To say, excuse me, sir, do you think what you're doing makes sense? People can't question him. Why? Why can't we question him? So does that mean that Chamisa has to be blamed? We need to look into ourselves, Zimbabweans, across the board. Like I said, across the board. <laughs> Because if it's a profession, I'm a professional, huh? right? If it's corporate, I've been in the corporate. If it's business, I know how to run a business. If it's failure, I failed before. So nothing that you can tell me, Zimbabweans across the board, too much pride and arrogance. We must come together. If we want to fix this country, we cannot outsource people to come. We can't blame Sada, we can't blame AU, we can't blame... 
we must come together and say, this is not who we are. And this cannot carry on. We want a better country. We want a stable economy. Because if I look at some of the meetings that happen in Orare that I see being aired online, you know, when they're having meetings that are being aired online, I cannot believe these meetings really make sense for a country. You know why? Because they do as they please. They come there, they see, they talk nonsense, no direction. They leave, they go home, they come back again, they loot when they want to loot. They go home. No one says anything. Nobody can rebuke them. What can they do? They go take the man, they go take the slay queens, they sweep women anytime they want to. They can just create a, 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 something like, like um, a project that does not exist. And they take the money as a please. They go there, they take the gold, they take the money. They call their friends, they do their dubious deals. They take the money and they go. No one says anything. We all just blaming Shamisa. <laughs> no, we need to introspect. We need to introspect. I guess that's why most countries are looking. Because let me tell you. No marriage, no one in a marriage that had a marriage that wasn't working properly and that had to outsource their solution. No. Until the ones that are married change, nothing changes. What is that supposed to mean? Until us Zimbabweans change, we have to change. Let me tell you something. We can change a leader and still have problems. Chamisa may not find it even difficult to leave the country. I'll tell you why. I'll give you an example. Look at Zambia. Zambia have an incredible leader, Hichilema, but trust me, they were, some of them were even fighting Hichilema just for being a good leader. They are used to toxicity. That's what happened when you allow nonsense for too long, then it becomes a culture and the people think that is okay. We need to look into, we need to introspect as Zimbabweans, and that's, it, is, it is a fact, we need to introspect. Quite a very powerful, um, you know, it, there was actually a message that was sent out by Hopo Chimone. He was responding to Eddie Cross utterances. You heard when Eddie Cross was talking about blaming Chamisa. Um, and uh, he responded to him. He said, I look forward to reading your memoirs. It was, no, he was actually responding to Freeman Chari. Freeman was responding to Eddie Cross after he spoke about the issue of Congress. And also still blaming Chamisa that Chamisa didn't do anything when Shavangu came through with the nonsense. Chamisa did not take action. And this was a message that was sent out by Hopo, a very, very powerful message. He said, I look forward to reading your memoir. They confirm what I always said, that we just don't have a Zanpia problem. But we have a Zimbabwean problem. We must all accept we have a Zimbabwean problem. I say so because the opposition, just like Zanpia, also has a choreographed congresses, as you have confirmed, and as we all know. It means that there is no internal party democracy when the leaders have already been selected by the president and his people. But Zimbabweans are not yet ready for that national conversation uh, because they don't want to accept that the people is national and not just partisan. Society is unified for lack of a better term. The, the problems that we face as a country are seriously cultural. They're very complex challenges that go beyond partisan politics. The leadership issues that the country is grappling with are deeply rooted in societal structures historical factors and cultural broader systems. It is quite evident that when there is a lack of genuine internal democracy within political parties, it limits the choices available to the electorate and it seriously hinders the development of a robust democratic system at both party and national level. Parties govern a country as they are run. So I want to disclaimer, very important, I'm not a politician. I'm not a politician. I'm simply a Zimbabwean that is fed up of nonsense. It's as simple as that. Um, I'm not a politician, but I can't be in society that does, not, that, does, that does not grow. Unfortunately, that pisses me off. I want to be in a space where I see growth. If there's no growth, I lose my mind. What am I supposed to say? I can't even begin to fathom moving around Zimbabwe, even Harare. You know, if I was a billionaire like Strav Masiwa is... I would buy paint, get builders to go to Rivamba I'm, I'm sorry to say this. So at least when I walk, I walk in a clean place. That would be me. Unfortunately, I'm not there yet. I'm just so sick and tired that we keep on, you know, we are, it's like a vicious cycle of nonsense for decades, literally. We talk about the issue of currency today, the inflation. 
It happened before. Why we didn't resolve the issue? Why? It's back again. It has been there for decades. It's known. I remember the time that we printed a trillion dollar. Do you remember the trillion um, um, dollar <laughs> currency that we printed actually in Zimbabwe? We forgot that. When you could buy like Teleso card for a lot of money, people would queue for, for a card. Like I'm talking about SIM card. I feel like we have been so prone to, 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 to poverty, abuse, toxicity, that we're just tolerating it. And say, so, no, you know, that, yeah, nothing we can do. No, there's nothing like nothing we can do. There is a solution. Solution is simply telling people, schooling their eyes, could we can't take your nonsense any longer. As simple as that. And let me tell you where it starts. It starts right there in your society. Looking squarely into the person and saying, we won't take your nonsense here. That's where it starts. It, it's not going to start on top. It starts where you are now. Definitely it's Stockholm syndrome. That's what we suffer from. How come in other spaces, people don't even dare? Get this right. When you see, when you look at this Chavangu issue that is always being referred to in this era, because there have been a series of which include Douglas Monzora had his own episode of nonsense that he did last time and get away with it. And he has the nerve to be blaming Shamiso. Now we, we are in the era of Shamangu. We held like this king is holding around, holding a stick, disrespecting people. I'll tell you what, what, when you see people standing up the way that Shavangu did, it says a lot about us. It's, it's, not, it's, not, about, it's not about politicians. It's us in the society. He knows good, there's nothing they're going to do to me. But I was expecting people and it will allow you to take him, to arrest him. Citizens, they said, we, we don't mess up with our... Day. Don't talk about politicians. Tell him, you do not mess up with our lives Yeah, This is our life that we are talking about. It's not about politics yeah. It's our lives. It's people who voted, who spend their time <laughs> on polling stations, right? People spend their time at polling stations. All those things don't really matter, but they matter. Zimbabweans, we need to look at each other and do what's right for us. It's not about politicians here. That's why sometimes I don't care anymore about ZANPF. If people think they're the problem, I think we should show ZANPF what we have. We have people who are collecting cars today. <laughs> they don't question, they just collect. You know, it's the society that we've built, unfortunately. They don't question where the cars are coming from. They're just like, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm better than the other person because I'm being given this car. So I'm better than the other person. Now, again, I've told you that with the big mouth of Eddie Cross again, also still blaming Chamisa, but again, still mentioning, you have heard him saying that our president, Emerson Nankago, will never, will, you know, will not you know, extend his term. You also mentioned that, um, you know, VP Chiwenka will not be, a, will never be a president of Zimbabwe, not even for five minutes. These were the words of Eddie Cross, because I don't want to take words out of his mouth and act like these are my words. That was Eddie Cross who said so. So you must take a listen to him because I'm going somewhere. Morgan was elected unopposed, and uh, and the other guys and who, who Chamisa ran for 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 for, for organising secretary. He was beaten, beaten, but three to one, in in a congress like that. And um, and what did we do then? What did the international community do? They said, "Well, look, look at it. I mean, uh, Welshman held a congress in Bulawayo, nine hundred delegates <laughs> from the whole country." So then the battle was over. They knew who was boss. It was Morgan. And those guys disappeared. You don't think that Chamisa couldn't use that? Who did, who did they vote for in 2023? <laughs> they didn't vote for Chabangu. They voted for Chamisa. And what he's done is, a dis what he's done is actually is to, he, he's, failed, he's failed the people. He's failed the people, and he'll pay a heavy price for it. If he thinks he can recover from this, he's dreaming. <laughs> and I think we've got to look for new leadership. In fact, everybody's got to look for new leadership. Emerson is not going to run for a third term. He is going to retire in 28. And uh, ZANU itself, there's a generational change taking place. You know, I talked to some of the younger people in ZANU-PF, 
There's some exciting guys. Really exciting guys. General Chuenga is second in line. Wouldn't he be taking that post? I were. Not even for five minutes. <laughs> Chuenga is part of the past. And he's gone as far as he can do. Um, he will he will retire along with along with Emerson. Emerson keeps him in there because he needs that constituency. Wow. Do you think um, Emerson Jr. could take over? No. Right. They've got to win the people. They've got to win the party. You know, and I think that's that's tough. But I think that there will be a generational... One thing I'm absolutely sure of is my generation, and that includes Emerson and all the others. I mean, I'm 83. My generation has failed Zimbabwe. We failed, we failed Rhodesia, we failed Zimbabwe. Agreed. And the new generation, the next generation now must come into... I've been talking to young businessmen here. And... You know, while he's saying what he's saying, I'm actually thinking that that's one of the reasons why people are fighting Chamisa. Everyone can see that it's a different generation. But because people are greedy of power, then they can be, they can, then they can push you for having a very, very normal society. Like I'm talking about a sound, you know, loving, peaceful society. It seems people are so obsessed with positions. I don't care about positions. I care about fulfilling purpose. And be in mind, fulfilling purpose has nothing to do with the position. From the way I'm seeing a um, majority of Zimbabwe's being so obsessed with position, it says a lot that they don't even have a clue of what life is about. Life is not about position, it's about purpose. What's your calling? Why are you here? You didn't come here to be, robbed, to be pushing people around. What are you here to do? Not to abuse people. That's why when you're an abuser, nothing works. Each and every one of us is called for a purpose, very unique one. What are your talents? What are your gifts? Your gifts are not to boss people around. This is why any person will rise up and begin to abuse people. Nothing works. Because that is against destiny. Destiny has never been about abusing. It is always about encouraging, believing, affirming, trusting, working together with other people. That's what life is about. But it's like everyone is just one the position. This is where we say, let's fix up the economy so that at least you can focus on your calling and you stop bossing people around and be desperate. I mean, under normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, Eddie Cross is right when he's talking about the issue of Shavangu, that people did not vote for Shavangu. He's a million times right. But unfortunately, our, our situation is abnormal. So <laughs> that's why he did what he did, because the situation is abnormal. But you know how wise people speak? They speak very direct. They don't, they don't beat around the bush. If our society was normal, what happened in Zimbabwe could not even happen. But it's an abnormal situation. People think they can get away with it. But no, brothers and sisters, you're not getting away with it. Some of y'all, you are aiding people who are very close to go to heaven. And you're going to be in this world. You have to pay for them, unfortunately. Because the lead is going to come off. Protection will come off. There will come a time where you are, you are head on with life. And you have to be answerable because <laughs> principles of life will catch up with you. Life is not governed by who have got the power. It's governed by principles. So, brothers and sisters, some people are going to pay it heavily. We'll be watching and we'll be talking about it. We will be talking about it, unfortunately. And we'll be calling you out. But Dr. Wumundu Amuzembi did not really get it well when it comes to what uh, decrossed some of the things that he said. And he went out to say the hallmark of a Rhodesian is dividing black Zimbabweans and pitting them against each other right into the presidency. 44 years after independence, let's be very alert to this. A Rhodesian at heart will go to the grave, a Rhodesian, and will off guard inadvertently sometimes manifest. But that didn't go well with some people, and people began to respond to him immediately. A Norman said to him, this coming from you is disappointing. What makes you more Zimbabwean than AD? Like you, he was also born in Rhodesia. Is his skin color the problem for you? Can I tell you, I'm, I'm someone who doesn't want to hear about racism. I think like every Zimbabwean, we've got an ID, birth certificate that says Zimbabwe, you're Zimbabwean. The, the thing is that we have allowed politicians to dictate how we should live our lives um, and how we should treat each other. Uh, honestly, 
I we have so much respect for Dr. Walter Muzembe, so much respect. But I think what you mentioned about the issue of reduction and beam and his skin color, there, of course, definitely, I think it was a bit off. Because, and I know some people can say maybe we should have checked the context, but these are words, and words are very powerful. And Dr. Walter Muzembe commanded the following, and he's a very respected man. When he speaks, people hear him. And I think I agree with what um, Norman said to say, from you, especially you being a respected doctor, and I mean, like I said, he's a, he's a powerhouse. He's known for being a box office. So um, being that may, he, there's no way people would just keep quiet and say, oh, go ahead, sir, and say whatever you can say. Of course, we don't have to look at skin color in 2024. But what we can do is to really listen to what a person say. If we want to debunk, we can. You know what I mean? But we must never rob our, um, our wrists in any conversation. It's only really Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a very... I don't think Zimbabwe cares, honestly, because majority of Zimbabweans in the diaspora are working with white people. So to them, it's like, oh, that's normal. <laughs> to me, it's like it's a normal life. Uh, there was a time I went for a camera and I was the only black person. <laughs> to me, I was like, that's the only life. <laughs> I don't care either you're white or black. As long as we can rhyme, what's up? We can just vibe. Nobody cares. I can even marry a white person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't care. As long as you love me, we're good to go. You know, but he also say, I'm more disappointed with you who has a right to invoke his skin color to his defense. I've reduced registration documents, by the way. So do millions of other black Zimbabwean, but was never a reduction at heart. But we must remember that our problems today are not, are not from white people. Okay? <laughs> are from our brothers and our sisters. People that are keeping us at ransom are not white people in Zimbabwe. Maybe, maybe. Because it's a statement that he said, I guess, I guess I understand where um, Dr. Walter Musebi is coming from. There was a time he said um, that um, Kudakta Gure is, uh, is, is an authentic businessman because he's working with white people. You know, he said, because he's working with white people. That's what he said. So I guess that's where this is coming from. But to me, I heard as if it was like, only you can do authentic stuff when West people are close to you. So now that he is advising the president, he's very close to Zanpeva, they're doing right. We still have violence in the country, people being abducted in the country. I mean, to me, I'm like, as long as one of us can be hurt intentionally because of politics, we haven't had peace yet. Because <laughs> we don't even need to get to that. We don't even need to hate each other because we are different in our views. There's no reason. For us to hate each other. We really don't have to. <laughs> but he also mentioned about, now this is quite very, this is even more interesting because uh, Lucas, Lucris is asking a question. He said, are you calling him erudition based on his skin color or because he was born before independence in which case you are also Rhodesia? He said, just counter his claims with facts, Dr. Mzembe, not racism. He poked your Mugabeka, now you are angry. Now, this is quite a very interesting point here. And then Dr. Walter Muzembe responded. He said, um, I'm calling him a Rhodesian because his heart, which can't discern that in a cockpit, there are co-pilots who are flying this machine together for more than five minutes. Okay, now I see. When the captain goes to relieve himself or rest, co-pilots take over is we have seen many times co-pilots act as president. So if you can't read through the de his divisive um, inundo, that is your problem. Okay, okay, I get this. He's talking about what he mentioned uh, regarding the VP Chuenga that he can only he can't even be a president even for five minutes. So that's what angered Dr. Walter Muzem. So he's now talking from a point of he's a vice president. Every time when the president is not in town, the vice president takes over. But here's the thing that people are not getting here. Don't forget that we've had other statements again from Ian Mac um, is it, was it, was it, Mac not not Macmillan, sorry. You remember Macmillan what he said during the time of the God Mafia when we watched God Mafia? When he called him, he called the VP, I don't like the word, but he called him Danda Do you remember that? So can, 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 you, can, you hear, can you hear the pattern? Yeah, sometimes we need to say good day. People will treat you the way you want to be treated. Let me explain further. Even during the time of Smith, even here in South Africa, everywhere across.
across the world, it's not that white people stand for each other, but black don't. Black people don't. <laughs> I'm just going to drink some water here. You expect white people to respect you when they're seeing people suffering with so much hunger in the country? They see you looting resources and you expect them to respect you. You listened to his interview. You made it clear that there was a time you, the CIO were after him. Wanted to hate him because he'd spoken the truth. You remember what he said? He also spoke about how most people in the Zanpia are just looting resources in the country and leave people in poverty. He also spoke about Wiknow. He mentioned that Wiknow is a, a corrupt. We don't even see where he's getting his money from. That was a Dick Cross mentioning that. My point is simply that don't expect people to respect you if you can respect yourself. It's a principle, all right? Wise people protect each other, yo. But we can't. Our people are dying of hunger where we are looting from them. Our brothers and sisters, black brothers in Zimbabwe, our brothers that we love, some of them we grew up with, have turned against us because of greedy. And you expect wise people to respect you? No, sir. No, ma'am. It's a principle, right? He's right. <laughs> he's actually right. Now I realize he's right. Um, actually, he's right. Eddie Cross is right. He's watching. That, wow. You're looting and leave people in poverty. Hospitals don't have no drugs. But even during the time of Smith, they had their own issues, but hospitals had drugs. There was water, right? <laughs> there was water, clean water. There was electricity. I said, things were not okay. But honestly... Black people, we need to look at each other and say, is this who we want to, to be? Is this who we are? Before we start blaming white people, because white people are, yo. It's not, it's not white supremacy. It's because white people have, have mastered the art of loving each other. Even if a person is wrong. It's so, you know, the, it, it, no one is perfect, right? But, you know, it's when you believe in someone, this is why I don't understand why is it people always like to attack Nelson Chamisa because we should support him. Especially as the young people, we should support him and say, brother, we see you, you are trying. Things are not okay. We believe in you. We're praying for you. Keep moving. We are with you. We'll get there. That's how we will win. But imagine spending all time in slander someone. It doesn't work like that in life. The principles remain. If you can encourage your child, you can encourage your husband, you can encourage your, your neighbor. What stops you from encouraging someone else whom you know is aspiring to be something? Again, boils down to us as a people. It's a problem of the culture. We are toxic. We are broken. And we need healing. But you know how the healing starts? It starts with you and me. Where we are in our society, in our families, in our communities, at work. We start by believing in each other, not destroying one another. Do you understand me? We start by believing in each other and supporting each other where necessary. That's how we can build a strong Zimbabwe. There's no any other way around. Now, Nelson Chamisa, um, this morning, you know, every Sabbath, he sent out a message, right? He did send a message. He said, God made every, every nation. He determined our appointment times. We must seek him from one man. God made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the appointment times and the boundaries of their lands. God intended that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Through he is not far from each, uh, each one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being. That is Acts 17, 26, 28. A happy Sabbath. And in, bear in mind today, he put a picture where he was wearing yellow. Okay, again. So we back to yellow. <laughs> I was laughing. I was like, guys, yeah, I'd bought. Okay. Yeah, I'd bought my, my regalia for blue regalia. Okay. <laughs> It means I need to go. I'm just waiting for a signal to go in church. <laughs> I'm waiting for a signal to go in a church because I saw that we are not being sued for that color of the regalia. So un unbelievable. Um, it's wearing yellow. It's, it's literally said to you, it's, it's a game of chess. Ka. It's a game of chess. It's definitely a game of chess. Now, there is a... Uh, um, a video that he shared. Remember, I'm a, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I, as much as I love being called a Christian, but I don't like it because Christianity as a, as a religion is messed up. It's contaminated by cults. 
and it makes it very harder for people to actually be able to understand who Jesus is and what is he all about. So I love to call myself a follower of Jesus Christ because then I'm very specific. And I know that I have, a, for me, the only reason why I follow Jesus is because I love his role modeling. I mean, he modeled life so well and I, I've decided that I need to follow his footsteps. So I, I don't care much about the religion. I care much about the, the Jesus that I'm following. So that's why I, love, I don't want to be called a Christian. But he, he no such time he posted a video this evening. This video was literally extracted from, um, from uh, a church, a Zion, you know, the Zion church for, for, from Tendi, you know, that blue one and white for women and the, the guys with, the, with, the, with, the, with the, that badge. It's like a, a dove badge and the green uniforms. Yes, you know, that, that the Zion that dance so much in the, you know, <laughs> yeah, that is Zion church. He, he sent out a message that is such a powerful piece. I want you to listen to it very carefully, okay? Listen to this video carefully because it's, it's so pegged with so much. Again, a preacher was preaching and also Chamisa shared it this evening. That was around about three hours ago. Take a listen. Equipment yours is right there, Kanga Irio, the America of the day. You have a lot of money. Mari Kutumira Mugengi Unesimba. Kutemere na chukuma na cha asuza. No mpani, no mpani. No mpani, no mpani. It was done in so much that uno treneka. Because Mari Ashani na mapenzi. Uno prepare munu. Wake utazo ita mkuru. Wake ita mkuru. Why is it not Jesus? Uno vanda kusonzi kuma na wata. Kapiti. Why is it not Jesus? Uno vanda kusonzi kuma na wata. Kapiti. So the Lord is to make sure to one Not because Maria Comboreri. Because Maruna Damun has thick skin. He has to develop the thick skin. Amen. <laughs> That should have killed Joseph. Amen. Zakainda Mujira Make. Amen. Nana Mozamuna Mozamuna on a Zinofana Kwamushira menu. Amen. Because Maria, you were to quit and remember. Amen. And I also shot in the man whenever war, like a Kuria Kambuya. Amen. Amen. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. You are not to do that. Because of course, to not be a Zion, you are not going to be a Namo. You are Kura Uchit Sazarozi food. Food and then you want to be a court. You need 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 to the Lord can do it. Amen. He can just make sure Matimba Mangwana only got a billionaire. But he has to prepare him first. That's like a scum. It's your nation. Here, here, Maraj, prepare one. Amen. Who knows she to be? 
Amen. 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 What a powerful, what a powerful teaching. Yeah, what a powerful teaching. <laughs> that was so powerful. All right. Um, after you, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I, I'm a, I, don't, I don't like to be this Christian. It is, it's messed up. I mean, a lot of lies in the church. And I just want to read my Bible and live for God. It's as simple as that. One thing you must remember is Zimbabwe situations between darkness, like real evil, real evil. That's why I've said whenever you bring all this, all this academia jargon and saying, oh, no, people are just corrupt. No, people are not just corrupt. People are evil. It's, it, use the right words and call things as they are. Corrupt, these are just ways that we're used to glamorize wrong. You know the devil is a liar to glamorize wrong. Zimbabweans, majority of Zimbabweans are evil. You know, looting, taking money that's supposed to feed the poor is evil. It's not, it's, it's, calling it corruption, you're actually making it, you are glamorizing it. They are evil. What they are doing is satanic. It's wickedness from the pit of hell. <laughs> it's not normal, it's abnormal. I say, if you can even actually be able to record this, record this so that they can hear. What you are all doing, looting money that's supposed to feed the poor, taking money that's supposed to buy medication in hospitals, is evil. It's satanic. It's barbaric. It's diabolical. Wickedness from the pit of hell. You are worse than the devil himself, Lucifer. You're worse. Because at least he ran to from. You are just making the very same people suffer. At least the devil can be seen in, he does, he's not, he's not omnipresent. He just run to from. So while he's busy attacking someone, they at least on the other side, people are breathing. But yo, you are squeezing Zimbabweans like day in, day out. And you are not stopping. That's satanic. You are obsessed by material things that you all came without and you're going to live without. But it's, just, it's simply an obsession. Which very soon you're going to realize that you're actually very empty. But that's what happens when your heart is evil. When your heart is evil, you think that if I collect things, I'll feel better. No, no, no. You won't feel better. Until your heart is clean, you will never be, you will never be happy. And you never experience fulfillment. Fulfillment comes from having a good heart. You are satanic. <laughs> People should tell you the truth. It's satanic and evil. And most of your people, you're calling pastors, quote-unquote, are devils from hell. They lie, masquerading as men of God. You know, they are men of God during the day. In the night, they are signing deals. They are selling your souls. And they come to us and say, let's pray. You know, I, I can't believe that a pastor in Zimbabwe can say to a family that is hungry, let's pray. No, the solution is, you should tell the people you're playing with 
to stop looting money that's supposed to feed the poor so that these couple here don't come and complain about financial problems. Simple as that. We don't have problems in the country. We simply have people who are evil. Evil hearts. That's the only problem that we have. But you heard what they mean is God may allow it. God will allow evil. You know why? Because from here, when this ends, we will know nobody will ever mess up again. Because we have tested how painful evil can, that we only want good. We're not going to carry on with this nonsense. We are going to say, no, no, we're not just going to be in search of good. Because evil doesn't help. It kills. Even families. If you want to see poverty, fight in your family. Fight. I fight with your sister and your cousin. Nothing works. It's a principle. <laughs> but you see, when you see those families that are united, they succeed. God commands a blessing. It's a principle. Where there is love and unity, God is there. God is beginning to bless. You see, their children easy. They marry good men into good families. And you just toxicity after toxicity. Until you change, nothing works. Until we change, nothing works. Their thieves have to change. Their hearts must just change. And tonight, tonight, as I'm speaking to you right now, it requires just a split second for them to say, we have hit people enough. Let's stop. It, is, it does not need the subject to come to Zimbabwe or EU. To come. There's no meeting that is required. It's simply them to sit and say, yo, we have done enough. Let's stop. And the whole country will turn around. But you know what? If their heart is hardened, it's hard. They are so obsessed. You know, it's, um, you're obsessed with the, my farm. You know, Ivu ne madaka. You're obsessed. <laughs> you know, ne mavu. Like, muda ne wangu. You know, zimba, marili ku Dubai. It's sad. You either going to love life or you're loving things. There's a difference. You can still be peaceful with all things. But I guess they were not, they were not equipped when they received this stuff, they were not equipped. When they just grabbed this thing, they wanted to take everything. They were not equipped. That's why we have problems today. It requires a process. For any person who understands success, you know, if you really work hard for something, you know because each and every step you take, it has its own challenges, right? It has its own challenges. But for those who never work for the money, they can take money, go and loot today a billion dollars. They're all over the place. Women, you know, you can see them exchanging women, cars, no direction because they never worked for the money. The money is dirty. It does not give them peace. They're thinking, oh, if I buy the latest Royce and Royce, I'll have peace. You buy that, you realize it's too empty. Oh my God, I see if I can take, if I can take the woman that, ex, that expense, I'm going to get to a story now, you're going to hear. <laughs> you hear it now, now. If I take that slay queen, Maybe I'll feel better. Who is a beautiful lady in town? Maybe I'll feel better. I can really take eight buttocks in it. You can do whatever you want and still be empty. You know where you find the peace? Is when you begin to treat people the way you want to be treated. Otherwise, nothing works. Nothing works. And we can see it. It's happening right in our corners. Two stories that breaks my heart. Two stories. I'm going to tell you the truth. That breaks my heart. Every time I watch them, I'm like, I wish, I wish. Zimbabwe is on the other side. Number one story, there's a Chinese couple um, that is actually from the rural China. China. They do a lot of videos online. I forgot I could have bring their names. Maybe we could go and subscribe there. Incredible couple. And they talk about their rural life. If they, if they go Kumunda, Vashibika, you know, that's a rural life. But they've got electricity in the rural. They've got water in the rural from the taps, you know. In China, food is cheap. They can buy fresh meat, you know, and they'll be cooking. I love watching those, that couple. And every time I'm like, God, I wish Zimbabwe had electricity or Wi-Fi in the rural areas. Young people would make big monies. They'll create their own employment. I'm telling you facts. They'll create their own employment. Now there's another Zimbabwean woman as well. They, they call the Mawenje family. You can also see she's a Zimbabwean woman, beautiful girl, got married to a Ugandan guy, Ugandan man, which says to Zimbabwean men, hello. <laughs> hello, brothers. Yo, women are going to Uganda, yo. And there's a lot of, she's gorgeous. You know, she went to Uganda. She found a love in Uganda. But she said something that broke my heart one day. She was talking. She said, uh, the first time she came to Uganda, she's married to this guy. She knew the Zimbabwean life of poverty, right? Do you know what Uganda is better than us? Do, do you? Do you 
<laughs> yeah. Your own God, please. <laughs> she said that um, when she immediately after her marriage and she moved to Uganda, she was struggling to understand why there was so much food. She said in Uganda, you can get in if you want to buy a plate of food. Like, for example, you get into a restaurant and you ask anything that you want. If you want something for 20 rand, you can ask. They'll give you anything as long as it's within the parameters of 20 rand. Yes, it's rose and whatever. You know, see, guys, right. You know what I mean? And she said, I used to eat and eat and eat until I was getting even sick. Because I was not saying in Zimbabwe, we don't have food. No, I'm fine in Uganda, there's food. In Uganda, we don't even store meat in our fridge. We just go to the and we buy fresh meat every day. These are countries that has got a good economy. They're not perfect. They may not even look like, but they have an economy that functions. Breaks my heart to say, Lord, our people have to eat when they get somewhere. These stories should be taken to parliament. These stories should be taken to parliament. Did you see, guys, the, the member of parliament in Mexico who removed their, his clothes and only left with a pant and said, this is exactly how most of our people are moving around in the streets. They are naked, you don't bother. They don't eat, you don't bother. But you pretend like you love the money in parliament. These stories should reach the highest office. People are not celebrating food when they go somewhere else. But how much minerals do we have in the country? How much money do we have? Billions of dollars are moving out every month out of the country. Looted by individuals. Zimbabwean guys and men, women, mothers, whatever, wives, slave queens, and leave people in poverty. It's a curse. And I'm sorry to say this, I'm a bad news for y'all. We're busy looting. Your time is coming. You're going to pay it heavy. It's not going to be me. It's the law of life. The law of sowing and reaping does not make a mistake. Whatever you sow in life is exactly what you're going to reap. It's a, it's a principle, unfortunately. And while I was giving you about these two stories, and I told you, Zimbabweans could be able to create work if they had full internet, full blown internet, even in the rural areas. They can create work. In 2024, so many um, you know, jobs that you can do online. People are making money on YouTube doing their stuff there. I know a lot of young people are doing it. But if a person can't have access, to, people in the royals don't even know what, what YouTube is all about. They don't even know what YouTube. You are blocking them to have internet every time because you want to keep them in poverty. Yeah, well, it's one thing. It's one thing to say we are just a poor country. It's another thing to keep people in poverty intentionally. Pauperizing people intentionally so that you abuse them. That's, that's, that, that's usual. That is a case. That is huge. Because pastors don't tell the truth and they pretend a lie, they should <laughs> warn people that there will be consequences. Some people may not pay because they are too old. They want to die anyway. But their children will pay. Their children's children will pay. It's simply a matter of time. It's a matter of when, but the time is coming. It's a fact. I'll be wrong if I don't tell you. Even if you can kill me today, I'll go to heaven. But at least I've told you the truth and you're still going to pay. You can't escape. It's a principle of life. But this will tell you that they are busy now contemplating to take Starlink. Remember, to, to, about last week they were saying, no, we may consider. Now they've changed their mind. They are saying, oh, upholding digital sovereignty. Zimbabwe's uh, imperative against Starlink's influence. That's a different story. They've changed their mind. They're changing their minds. <laughs> I also heard the Superman ones that are talking about, no, we don't wear too many radio stations. We can, I'm asking myself, Superman ones, what's your problem? What's your problem? If people can have a million radio stations. Now, I know America, almost like every house has got a broadcast happening. Who cares? 500, you can have any radio anytime in 2024, anywhere you want to. I'm just standing here, I'm talking to you all over the world, <laughs> in my house. <laughs> I don't have to be anywhere from my house, I can just talk to anybody. It's the, it's the digital world that we are in today. People are talking of AI, and they're talking about, no, we are contemplating styling, but that's the internet that people says they want because they're cheap. No, they are thinking it's a problem. So they are, they are contemplating now to consider styling, and they're saying there's a problem. Um, so the article that was sent out by Herald this evening was at the heart of the, in the afternoon, actually, at the heart of the matter lies the issue of control. By embracing Stalin, says Zimbabwe risks, yeah, this 
relinquishing control over its digital infrastructure to a foreign entity. That's the reason. Zimbabwe has made it clear that for Starlink to operate in the country, it should follow due procedure. Potras categorically stated that it never said no to Starlink, contrary to what public perception is being influenced. Potras is merely being proactive to ensure that all new generation low Earth orbit satellite networks are regulated by government in interest of data and national security. This is not peculiar to Zimbabwe, but world over, including in the U.S. Within Africa, the issue of regulation styling is being dealt with directly or sort of differently depending on the country's national priorities. Within SADC, countries like Mozambique, Zambia and Eswatini have licensed styling while Botswana and South Africa have turned down its applications. These countries have their reasons in line with their national security. I don't buy that. You know why? In South Africa, we've got functioning internet anytime, any day, any minute. We choose, actually. Millions. I don't even know their names. I can't even remember. The, the names are too many. So you, you, can't even, you can't even begin to compare Zimbabwe with South Africa. That's a lie. You can't. Hmm? You can't even compare Zimbabwe with South Africa. That is just simply... Just to tell you that they are contemplating. So, yeah, I told you we are the problem. We are the problem. <laughs> nothing is. A, we are the problem. Until we change, nothing will change. We have to change. That change a mighty hero, and everything will work. Let's come together and unite, people of Zimbabwe. Let's unite. Moving on, we're going to look at Mr. Wikino Shivayo, whom you heard, um, you know, Eddie Cross said he's corrupt. His money is untraceable. He's just having money that you don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. And there are also allegations. This morning, I saw in, um, a blogger, a South African blogger, dropping that uh, Mr. Wikino Shivayo is, uh, is in, in Miami, actually, gallivanting with the slave queen, a South African slave queen. These are allegations. A South African slave queen, her name is Mithaline Damasi. I know her very well. She recently had a, 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 a BBL done, you know, having big buttocks. And she also went and do her boobs. Like, you know, that's what happens in 20, when you get a slave king. <laughs> when you get a, a slave king, like, you know, that gives cause. And about last week, this past week here, yeah, I saw it. Maybe she was advertising or it's a brand new car she was bought. The latest Mercedes Benz. And this girl only do YouTube and some adverts there, you know. But her life does not align with the, the you know, the last song and the money she earns don't align. I'm talking about Mithlali. I know Mithlali very well. I know her. I've known her for years. <laughs> so the allegation that he's actually, you know, vibing with, um, with Shivayo. It's all over the internet right now as we speak. And Shivai is not a married man. He's married to Sonia, a beautiful woman. And, um, you know, but he is gallivanting uh, allegedly in Miami right now. <laughs> By the way, I also did do my research because I don't just, I do my research. I checked him in with uh, Wikino Shivai and I saw that he's actually in Miami because he posted that he's in, um, he's busy in Florida with uh, King, Sean Kingston. They both look alike. They're all heavy bodied. So they were both there in my, in, in my, so I'm, I'm sure whatever the allegations are may be true because they surfaced about a month ago without no proof. And today there was some evidence dropped because remember when people write, like when Musa Kaula writing things, he's got real sources um, about that. So that can show you what's going on with Mr. Chivayo. He's just spending money. <laughs> now he's spending money on women. You heard him last time he said that uh, he was talking. He said, when I'm driving my Royce and Royce in Arari and um, women are just saying, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Hi, <Tom. laughs> Hi, you heard him saying that. Mm -hmm. So he does that because he wants women to say hello to him, Mr. Chivayo. So Mr. Chivayo is in Miami, gallivanting with a slave queen that is known. Last time you heard when he was fighting with Olinda, so Olinda said, I was next to you and you had another slave queen again in the... I've told you what dirty money does. Dirty money, that's what dirty money does. You know when you're holding dirty money? Because on a piska, yako on this, Goldy, you know, kirayimu. So you get this tender for solar, you know, to supply solar to Zimbabweans. 
you know, you don't do nothing and you have no peace, you, you don't know where you're going or you're coming back. And you got another tender food to printing ballot box. You know, it was a, the ballot paper. <laughs> this past election, allegedly he was given the tender to actually print ballot papers for Zimbabwean election. That was Wikino Shivai. And how much was invested on that election? They said, how many millions? <laughs> yeah. Right, so we can know Shiva now. I think Anus Matanda is right. When you are feeling bad about something that you have done wrong and you're feeling so bad, you're like, you know, what can I do? He is writing a statement again, addressing Mukanya. You know, Mukanya is quiet. Mukanya Gandanga is quiet. <laughs> Let me just make it clear. I love Thomas Mafumo. I really do. I love Thomas Mafumo with all of my heart. Like everything within me. I love Thomas Mafumo. I salute that man. Like Gandanga. You know, long live Mukanya, long live Mukanya, long live. So, he's addressing Mukanya as well. At the same time, he's bastardizing Hopo Chingono. He's, I could took a Hopo. <laughs> you know, I was checking how old is Wikino Shiva. Wikino is only 42, right? He's, he's literally like, um, like a few months apart with me. You know, he's, he's only 42, right? And so me and him, we are more or less like, he's bastardizing, um, you know, Elders, does. That's what he does. He doesn't care. You know, he, he's um, um, invisible. You know, you untouchable. He plays with the big boys. So he get away with things. And he think he can do whatever he wants. and treat people like nothing. Anytime he wants to. So he sent up a message. He said, um, setting the record straight. That is Wikino Shivayo. I normally prefer not to respond to comments. Especially from a half-witted and failed pseudo-journalist. Like Hopo, which is a lie. Hopo is not a failed guy. <laughs> That's a lie. Hopo is a non is an award-winning journalist. Okay, so Mr. Wick now, you don't have a reason. You're simply a man who's just, nobody knows where the hell you're getting your money from. So it's a lie. Hopo is an award-winning journalist. He's also a filmmaker. He's not being a documentary, you know, a maker as well. He, I mean, he's known. I mean, he's known. So you, you, mean, you are not in his league. So let's just not forget about you, Quartet Talk Nonsense. But he went on to say, but let me spare some time during my busy schedule. Listen, in the USA. So it's true he's in the USA, all right? In the USA. Okay, I'm going to play for you. That song that you want. Stay, stick around. Stick around. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the USA to address this issue concerning, so as, I mean, I've got a big schedule in the USA just to address your issues. <laughs> I had to take myself off my busy schedule in the USA, gallivanting with my slave queen, you know, I take my time so I can address y'all Zimbabweans because you're bothering me while I'm having my good time, yeah. Put that on record, y'all, put that on record. So, to address the issue concerning our Chimurenga music, I call Thomas Mukanya Mafumo. It's an open secret that I offered Mukanya a small token of, listen, a small token of 700,000 US dollars. A small token, all right? In recognition of his remarkable contribution during the liberation struggle, his music was an inspiration to the second Chimurenga, which ushered political and economic independence that we all celebrate today. In good faith, I offer to buy him a fully furnished house of his choice in the low density suburbs of Harare, a brand new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser VXR or equivalent worth to $200,000 and $100,000 US dollars pocket money to make his twilight retirement in Zimbabwe more comfortable is an 81-year-old celebrated music icon. My Gesture was not an account of any political consideration, but an olive branch being extended to an aged man who has, who has been living in, in abjection and self-imposed exile from a country whose independence he contributed towards. Wow. It is highly regrettable that opportunistic and rent-seeking political stooges like Hopo thrive on peddling falsehoods that my generosity is an empty to bribe Bukanya. 
What a shame. Clearly, there is no hope that comes from a bitter person who languished in remand prison. Excuse me, that's deep, that's deep. Wow. What? Okay. Wow. Wow. Shoo. Uh, wow. Yeah, that is deep. It really cuts deep. Okay. Alone after being deserted by so-called opposition. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's deep. Put that on record, yo. Put that on record. So I remember on TV, I could see the cold sores all over his face dripping past during this incarceration. What? Okay. Um... Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to read further uh, this um, um, message because, yeah, he said it extremely violent. But, but for, 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 for the purpose of, I'm going to jump some of the things here because that was extremely pe pe personal. And um, I don't think there's any need for me to actually give him much of my air time. Especially when he was talking about, he, he, st he, he, he was attacking one point, then he went on to talk about this opposition, sympathies and social media activists thrive on deception and they have nothing but bitterness towards young successful businessmen like myself because their fallacy of being in power never materialized. The same is true with Job Scala, who wallowed in solitary confinement while his Anna Hopo drank donated whiskey and spent the few pounds begged from their Western handlers. Sure! Guys, Hopo, uh, sorry, oh, not Hopo, um, Wikno. Wikno Shivayo. Wow. Sure. He said, Numbraka Sopera Jobo Akasara Egamujeri with no hope, no respected lawyer to represent him, no money, only time to practice Mandela's voice. That's triple C for you. Unokizu Wandege Mashanga Asunodo Nawega. Okay, so for, for, for the purpose of destiny, I want to, to actually bold that one here. I will underline that. And I'm going to say that to you week now. Zanu pe afiriku kuzamu dege mada yema shanga heavy. You 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 not only going to fall. You are 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 not only going to fall. You are going to really fall. <laughs> Do not be misguided, Mukanya. Whether Mukanya accepts my offer or not does not change my handsome bank balance, or will it deter my philanthropic philanthropic work? It's his loss. So philanthropic work. Sir, before you go and do your philanthropy work, go and make sure we have good lights in Zimbabwe by fixing Gwanda solar panel. Sorry, sir. And then before you even start. It's his loss. Munongoramba, Muri Butsu, Mutandarika, Muri Kogoku America. Yo. You must never be deceived by this hopeless online psychopath that rejecting this life-changing offer will make you an overnight hero. I also find Mukanya's de uh, description and comments uh, of fellow musician Jao Prez and Macheso is poor to be disgraceful, especially considering his uh, destitution in foreign land. The last time he was in Zimbabwe, get this, get this what he said. The last time he was in Zimbabwe, he had nowhere to stay and was eventually slept in Philip Chiangwa's garage. So Mukanya slept in Philip Chiangwa's garage. That's what he's alleging now. This should make everyone understand the golden opportunity for Mukanya to be a homeowner and retire honorably. I come in peace with the genuine intention to assist and uplift the heroes still living amongst us. There is no political mileage to be gained from this gesture, just as I have done, since joining a wonderful church in 2008, I've spent huge amounts of money wholeheartedly buying my fellow Johan Masoe followers' houses, cars, and paying for their children's university fees, local and overseas, amongst other things. Looking in uh, retrospect, in the way I donated US million to Zifa in 2016, and just like I paid eight tickets 
and assisted in the re repatriation of Zimbabwean girls who had been trafficked to Kuwait. I've now extended my benevolence to Mukanya for no political reason. That's where he ended. These words came out of Wikino Shiva's mouth and that should be put on record. Um, you know what? I keep on talking about the records because I know that there will be a time where we are going to remind all of them. All of them and say, do you remember the words that you said? Was that you? Do you recall that? Do you remember that? And we'll be looking at you. Do you remember? These were your words. I think there's one thing, one thing that I've realized about um, most arrogant people in Zimbabwe is the lack of understanding that there will be future. And that future, a history is going to judge. Because what future does is that it will begin to expose you. And you look to the left and right and see no one. Zimbabwe is going to be the most beautiful country, with very successful people, and some of you, you won't have a name. You won't have a name. Because the people that are outside here, when they come back into that country, they will come back. <laughs> it's sad. You won't have a name. And it's sad because, I mean, uh, Wikino Shiva is, only, is very young. But I don't know who the parents are. But um, I'm not surprised because even his sisters always expose him online. That shows you that he's coming from a very broken family of life. Uh, because if your family is broken, that's what happens. <laughs> you get embarrassed all the time. The sister was a little, he's the, she's the one who was bastardizing him. Um, and I remember last time when the mother passed away, they were trying to do a tombstone. We covered that story here. And um, the sister was like, you want to make a, this big tombstone for my mom, but you never took care of her. That can show you the kind of person that he is, unfortunately. I mean, for me, it's like, I would say in the, in the words of Mother Teresa, um, you know, you want to change the world, go back home and love your family. Because you know what? Charity begins exactly at home. You can't be sitting and buying so-and-so cars, but you can't take care of your family. I was surprised to actually see him also giving his sister a car. I was like, oh, so you didn't even buy your sister a car with all the cars you have been giving out, your sister didn't have a car. Because, <laughs> yeah, my family comes first. My family comes first. Mm -hmm. My siblings, my, my, my sisters comes, my brothers come first. It's known. I, <laughs> I breathe for my family. I, yeah, it is what it is. So if you start with the people out there but your family, then it says a lot. It really says a lot, unfortunately. So, yeah, Mr. Wikino Shivayo. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, well, something is wrong in this country. And I'm, I'm asking myself questions. There are people in Zan PF who are very close to Wikino Shiva, and they can see these kind of statements that he writes, and they can't even say, brother, stop that. This is not right. You cannot say these kind of words because he's saying vile words towards people because they've spoken truth to power, and he doesn't want to hear truth because Mukanya did not take your money. You know what, what people in Zan PF don't realize? I, I think Mukanya is better off sleeping in the garage than taking your money, sir. He's better off sleeping in the garage. I'm better off sleeping in the garage than taking money from people from Zanpif. Sorry. I would rather be in the street than taking your money. It's suicidal to me. It's a curse. Because we know that money is dirty money, unfortunately. So Mukanya is right. You'd rather sleep in the garage when he knows that he's got peace than Mukanya being found out that he has taken your house, you know what? And then being kept now in prison by you, you young boy, using his name everywhere you go, that you, he has got a house because of you, he's got a car because of you. By the way, Mukanya has been is a, a world renowned musician who has been really doing well over the years. Mukanya can run a concert today and it will be packed and you tell me he does not have a house. Shame on you, Wick now. Shame on you for being disrespectful. Shame on you. You are a man, someone's husband, who behaves like you're a toddler. It's disgusting. It's embarrassing. And it's really sad. That's all I have for you tonight, guys. I'm going to end with this crazy man. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> He's a crazy man. <laughs> He's crazy. Mr. Wickno, you are crazy. You are really crazy. Go back home and love your family and be a respectful man to your wife because your stories are always outside there. And you've got a child who's actually a needs, needs special needs, and that's how you behave. Your wife have lost your dignity and respect because of your behavior. It's really sad. Maybe next time, invest your money in becoming a better person. Not for other people, but for yourself and your wife.
because what you're doing right now is disgusting. It is embarrassing and it's very sad. I love you all. May God bless you and may God bless Zimbabwe. So you must sleep tight and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Good night to you. And for those who just woke up, have a great day and bye for now.